Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror drama film, Shepard. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a funeral for a certain woman while the choir sings worship songs. Eric narrates that he has been struggling with nightmares. In the next scene, a family is seen doing their last farewell to the woman who died before burying her completely. Eric feels uncomfortable as he throws the rose into the coffin. As Eric cries and grieves, he feels something weird behind him. When he looks back, he sees a creepy dark figure, and suddenly, the coffin starts moving without any logical reason. Eric shivers and does not know what to do. The alarm clock starts blaring shortly, and Eric wakes up. This reveals that what he experienced was only a nightmare. After turning off the alarm, Eric contemplates and thinks about the bad dream. In the next scene, someone contacts Eric through his phone to summon him. However, Eric says to the person that he could not make it and needs some space and time to recover. As the scene flashes to Eric's room, it reveals that he has been struggling with his life recently. While reading the morning newspaper, Eric sees that a shepherd is wanted on a remote island. He considers applying for the position to escape his nightmares. Suddenly, Eric hallucinates and sees a small hand peeking at his table. To check, he goes near the table and opens the container. He sees nothing but his stuff. However, Eric's heart aches when he sees the ultrasound of his late wife and their baby. This reveals that the woman who is dead in his nightmare is actually his pregnant wife, and Eric is actually grieving about the tragedy. In the next scene, Eric is seen on the way to the remote island to apply as a shepherd. Before proceeding, he decides to drop by his childhood home to talk with his mother. Eric carefully walks toward the door and knocks on it. His mother opens the door, but she's not pleased with the presence of her son. Eric's mother blames him for his father's death, saying that Eric prioritized his wife before his family. The mother says to Eric that he only comes to visit because his wife is now dead. Angry, Eric screams that his mother does not have the right to talk about his dead wife. After the heated argument, the mother dares Eric to go away. In the next scene, Eric goes to a nearby lake. While contemplating, he takes the wedding ring off and throws it on the water as hard as possible. Eric sits down and starts having a mental breakdown. While shivering, he takes his knife and thinks about using it to end his life. While crying, he points the knife to his wrist to cut his vein. Fortunately, he's unable to take his own life. He drops the knife as he sobs drastically. Suddenly, he hears a sheep bleeding and sees one approaching him. Eric suddenly remembers the application for the shepherd position. This makes him think that there's still something to do with his life. While on the ship, a woman named Fisher approaches Eric. Fisher asks him if he is escaping or running from something. Eric lies, saying that he only comes to apply for a job. As they approach the shore, Eric takes his stuff and his dog towards the island. Fisher says that the old cottage will be Eric's new home. She takes the cottage key and gives it to Eric. Fisher explains the terrible situation on the island and warns Eric of the possible dangers. Fisher gives Eric a journal for him to record his thoughts and experiences during his stay on the island. Eric shakes the woman's hand for good luck. However, Fisher says that something is haunting Eric and she can see it with her own eyes. Creeped out, Eric starts walking toward his new home. As he opens the door to the old cottage, he notices that everything is rusty and very old. Interestingly, he sees a phone, but it does not have any signal. Similarly, there's no running water inside the house. Eric goes out of the house to begin exploring the island and to look for some fresh water. While walking, he sees a rock with strange markings engraved on it. Fortunately, he sees fresh water and quickly takes his bucket to fill it. Out of nowhere, Eric sees a necklace with a pendant ring dumped in the fresh water. He takes the jewelry and keeps it. Eric goes home to make some hot water. While doing his chores, he stares at the ring as he wonders where it comes from. After inspecting the house for more, Eric sees an old clock and decides to hang it on the wall. Once again, Eric goes outside to feed all the sheep. Strangely, he notices that his dog is staring at the old lighthouse. Quickly, the sun begins to set and the night goes deeper. Eric sees the very beautiful view just outside of his cottage. In the cottage, he sees a shelf of journals that are all similar to the journal given by Fisher to him earlier. He takes one of the journals and reads the content. Scarily, he finds writings about a witch lingering on the island. To find his bedroom, Eric needs to go through the old staircases. He finds it very difficult to climb stairs due to his fear of heights. Luckily, after a few attempts, he successfully reaches the cottage's second floor. He finds it very weird that his dog has been staring at the door for quite some time. The night lingers with a heavy storm while Eric thinks about his dead wife. While sleeping, he dreams about his dead wife on the beach. Suddenly, a car screeches, implying that his wife's death is caused by a road accident. It's now morning, and strange things are now beginning to happen. Eric is shocked to see that his dead wife's old cup is inexplicably filled with hot tea. The day continues, and Eric intends to do his job as a shepherd. Eric takes the sheep's food and brings it to the sheep. 
Suddenly, he hears a very creepy sound from behind, and the sheep begin to bleed aggressively. Eric screams at the top of his lungs, asking who's on the island. However, all the sheep suddenly go silent as they stare at Eric. He goes to the cottage, and he's still perplexed about the cup being filled with tea, without any other person around. Angry, he breaks the old cup and tears it to pieces. To check if the phone is working, he takes it, but it still does not receive any signal. Outside, he sees Fisher going inside the lighthouse. He intends to approach Fisher, but the woman leaves the island in a hurry. Eric tries to call her, but Fisher is already far from the island. Curious, he climbs the stairs and tries to go inside the old lighthouse. As he tries opening the door, he realizes that it's locked and he has no way of getting inside. Then, just beside the lighthouse, Eric sees a skeleton of an animal. In the middle of the night, Eric once again struggles to climb the stairs to reach his bedroom. While lying in bed, the memories of his dead wife still haunt him. This reveals that even though he escapes to a remote island, the memories of his dead wife still linger. Eric decides to take his pen and write his thoughts in the journal. Suddenly, he hears a scream from a distance. Eric is having another episode of a nightmare. This time, he's in the middle of the forest and sees his dead wife alive. However, when Eric looks behind, he sees the creepy, dark-hooded figure again that he saw in his last nightmare. Fearing for his life, he runs and is shocked when he sees the dark figure standing right in front of him. Not long after, Eric wakes up from his nightmare. Eric climbs down the staircases and sees his mother doing chores in the kitchen. Eric is really perplexed, and he asks his mother what she's doing on the remote island. The mother talks about her dead husband and says that Eric has no idea what she has been through. Eric replies that he also just lost her wife and he's also struggling. However, his mother goes mad and says that Eric cannot compare his father to his wife. The mother starts crying and sits down. She questions her son on why Eric left her alone when she was alone and struggling. Eric tries to consolidate his mother by hugging her. After that, Eric reiterates his question to his mother. He asked his mother how she found him in the middle of a remote island. The mother says it's a small world, but the mother's answer does not convince Eric. His mother continues to say bad things about his dead wife. She starts acting very aggressively as she takes the knife and cuts her own hand. Scared, Eric dares his mother to get out of the house. However, his mother continues talking and says that the baby in the stomach of his dead wife is not his, but the devil. Suddenly, the mother turns into something demonic as she takes the knife and attempts to stab Eric. Not long after, Eric wakes up. This reveals that Eric did not really wake up from his nightmare earlier. Rather, the incident with his mother was also a nightmare. Waking up, Eric notices that his dog is missing. Suddenly, the phone rings and he answers it. He realizes that Fisher is the one who's contacting him. Inexplicably, Fisher says that something is now beginning. Eric now thinks something wrong is happening, as he wonders how his dog is missing, even though the door is locked. Angry, he slams the phone down and punches himself in the face, trying to wake himself up. However, this time, it's not a nightmare anymore. To look for his dog, he goes outside to search. Instead of finding his dog through thick fogs, Eric finds the creepy hooded figure in the middle of the valley instead. He approaches the figure carefully to confront it. Eric laughs as he feels that he's going crazy. Suddenly, Eric sees a massive luxury ship in the middle of the valley. He goes inside to look for his dog. On board, Eric sees an old key and picks it up. Suddenly, the creepy hooded figure from his nightmares starts forming behind him. Eric walks as fast as he can without looking back at the hooded figure. Fortunately, he's able to escape and go to the old cottage. While resting, Eric is having flashbacks of his nightmares and the car accident. Then out of nowhere, he hears a baby murmuring inside the cabinet. With his knife, he prepares himself and opens the door. However, he realizes that the sound is only coming from a small bird. This reveals that the death of Eric's baby during his wife's pregnancy is also haunting him. Slowly going crazy, Eric goes back to the middle of the valley to look for the luxury ship. When he sees nothing but sheep, he cries and falls down to the ground. In the middle of the night, he decides to write his experiences in his journal. He's curious about the other writings, so he takes the other journal and reads it. He then sees a drawing of the creepy, dark, hooded figure that he has been seeing. According to the journal, the figure is called The Wrecker. When he turns to another page, Eric is shocked to see a drawing of his missing dog. As he cannot believe what he sees, he throws the journal away from him. In the morning, Eric cannot stop thinking about the strange happenings. As he stares at the ring he picked up in the freshwater spring, he realizes that it's the same wedding ring he threw away in the lake before going to the island. He apologizes to the ring for throwing it away. Suddenly, the phone rings and Fisher starts talking to him. He asks Fisher about what's happening. Fisher replies that he's the only person that could answer his question and that he should have been realizing what's happening by now. 
She implies that Eric is on the remote island for a reason, and that Eric is there for penance, and reflects on the sin that he committed to his dead wife and child. This reveals that the strange nightmares and flashbacks about the accident that Eric has been hallucinating the entire time have something to do with his sin. However, Eric insists that the incident was an accident, and he is innocent. While in denial, the death of his wife flashes back to the scene, and Eric slowly confides about the incident. It turns out, while Eric and his wife were on a road trip, he was intoxicated with alcohol. At the same time, he and his wife were having a major argument. As a result, Eric loses control of the car, and he leads the car toward the cliff, making them fall down by the sea. His wife died because of drowning. As Eric confesses his sin, it reveals that the cause of his wife's death is because of his drunk driving, and him being stuck on the island is a way for him to confront his sin. Fisher ends the conversation, and Eric is all alone. Desperate to be saved, he takes the old key and brings it to open the door to the lighthouse. After struggling to climb the stairs, Eric turns on the light of the lighthouse, which Fisher witnesses with dismay. As he exits the building, he sees all the sheep bloody and ritualistically flayed. While he's shocked by what he witnesses, he also sees his dog lifeless. Scared, he goes to the cottage and locks himself up. That night, he goes into another nightmare. While remembering the death of his wife and baby, he tries to fight the memory, and he suddenly wakes up. In the living room, Eric is confronted by the creepy hooded figure while mimicking his dead wife's persona. The figure keeps questioning Eric on his sin. To fight back, Eric uses the lighter that his dead wife provided him to set the hooded figure and the cottage on fire. The figure disintegrates as the cottage burns to ashes. Eric swims in order to reach Fisher's boat for escape. However, he starts to drown and lose consciousness. As he regains consciousness, he's unable to swim as the weight of his sin drags him down into the sea. In the next scene, Eric wakes up on the shore, and the locals bring him to a police station. When questioned, the whole nature of his confession comes to light. When he's driving intoxicated, the car carrying him and his wife swerved off toward a cliff. Eric was safe because he got out of the vehicle due to his fear of heights. As a result, the vehicle became imbalanced and fell into the water with his wife and their baby. After the interrogation, Fisher calls Eric to let him know that although the punishment for his sin is complete, she's still upset with him for breaking the rules by leaving. In the end, it reveals that Fisher murdered Eric's mother and planted Eric's journal with the police to frame them. This implies that the island is really a place for sinful individuals, including both Eric and Fisher, for them to reflect and be punished. However, Eric disobeys the rule by leaving the island. Because of this, Fisher, the servant of duty, punishes Eric even more. The thunder rumbles. Eric goes outside of his interrogation room, only to find that he's emerging back to the island, indicating that the punishment for him is far from over. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.